we're going to talk about W. Arthur Lewis. W. Arthur Lewis was born in 1915 on the Caribbean island of St. Lucia, and he passed away in 1991. He taught at LSE, University of Manchester, and Princeton. In addition to his economic writings, he also was head of University College of the West Indies, and he was an important economic advisor to Ghana. He had a very worldly life. In 1979, he won the Nobel Prize. He is best known for his work on economic development and the theory of labor markets. In 1954, Lewis published a very famous article, his most famous contribution. It was called Economic Development with Unlimited Supplies of Labor. In this article, Lewis sought to overturn previous understanding of how labor markets worked in developing nations. In his view, there was a large quantity of what he called surplus labor. So if an economy would grow in some of its sectors, say manufacturing or exports, that surplus labor would move in from the countryside and wages would fall again. So his main point was that the existence of all this surplus labor made it very hard to boost wages in the growth sectors, and it made economies stay poor for longer periods of time than we might have expected. So the older view of a labor market was one where, when the demand for labor went up, wages would go up. In Lewis's view, that doesn't happen for a long time. When the demand for labor goes up, first you get a large movement of people coming in from the countryside, and wages don't really go up much at all. Let's just review some of the key ideas in this article and in Lewis's work. For Lewis, a key question is, why are workers in developing nations still poor after those countries have been growing for decades? And again, he invoked this idea of surplus labor, that it's simply very hard to get a sustained wage increase, because there were so many poor workers out there in the countryside who would be willing to migrate to urban areas if the job opportunities were there. Second, Lewis was in some ways skeptical about capital formation. He argued that in the short run, and maybe even in the medium run, capital formation it raises profits, but it doesn't really raise wages. It helps more people, say, live in cities, but wages will be fairly flat. Lewis favored capital formation. He just was somewhat of a pessimist as to how long it would take for capital formation to pay off. He pointed out that wages are going to rise really only when the pool of surplus labor is more or less exhausted, and that could take further decades. So Lewis was trying to explain why the third world, as it was called in his time, was not seeing a greater boost in living standards than what he observed. Finally, and also controversially, Lewis toyed with arguments for protectionism rather than free trade. So a standard argument for protectionism is that by protecting domestic industries against foreign competition, you create some jobs for your home market. Free traders countered with the natural argument that foreign suppliers could produce those goods and services more efficiently and that it would be better to have free trade, buy those goods and services from abroad, and enjoy greater prosperity. Lewis argued that if you could artificially create jobs in your domestic market, this might look inefficient in the short run, but it actually would mean that you would more quickly exhaust that pool of surplus labor by creating those jobs and you would more quickly get to the point where capital formation would raise not only profits, but also wages. Of course, not all economists have agreed with the models of W. Arthur Lewis, but they have indeed revolutionized development economics, our understanding of labor markets, and they have given rise to many decades of debate.